Welcome to Beginning, Intermediate, and Advanced Playwriting. Advanced Playwriting, Lesson 3.2, Character Development, Plot Development, and Transcension. In a full-length play, the audience is going to spend a lot more time with the characters than in a short play. In order to keep surprising the audience and keep them engaged, your characters will need to have a greater range than in a short play. A character's range is defined by how many different ways he or she can react when something happens. If your character always reacts the same way, if, scene after scene, the character has the same plan and the same ideas, then he has a narrow, limited range. If your character behaves differently to each character he engages with, if his reactions to one event is markedly different than his reactions to a previous event, then your character has a wider range. If a character has the same plan over and over again in each of his scenes, and if he undertakes the same action, he will be predictable after the second time. A character with a wider range who makes different, unexpected choices in response to different events will serve to keep the play more interesting and surprising. In a good play, the main character is changed by the end. Ideally, this profound change happens just before or because of the climax, or occurs in such a way so that it causes the climax of the play. This transcension of a character is one of the places where the playwright has a powerful opportunity to work upon the minds of the audience. The audience follows the play by empathizing with the main character. This is why it is important that the main character be sympathetic. As the audience follows the story, they experience the events of the story in their minds as the main character does. So when the character, up against the pressures of events, changes his vision or discovers new depths in himself, and undergoes a transcension of character, the audience will undergo it at the same time in their minds. Since one character undergoing a transcension adds that much more power to the play, see if you can cause a transcension in all of your characters. The most important character, the main character, will undergo their transcension at the climax. The second most important character will undergo their transcension before that. The third most important character will change before that. This is because you stack the climax of your play in the order of ascending power of each event. The main character's transcension will be the most powerful, so it is part of the play's climax. The audience will perceive the main character as the one with the biggest problem who drives the play and undergoes the most profound transcension. If you have broken up these attributes among different characters, be aware of how you are organizing your plot. If you disappoint your audience, they will be unsatisfied and drawn out of the play. It is not better craftsmanship to leave the audience unfulfilled. To give them the most profound experience possible in the theater, satisfy them in every way. Your exercise for this lesson is to look at a play you are planning or one you have already written. Look at all the characters and see which of them undergo transcensions over the course of the play. If none of them do, then plan how the main character could undergo a transcension at the climax of the play. The change needs to read clearly to the audience, so not one of them has any problem seeing it. If all your main characters undergo transcensions, good on you. Look to the next most important characters that don't have transcensions and see what you can do to make them have one too. When you plan your next play, give each of your characters a transcension over the course of the story. The first character that you give a large, important move to at the beginning of the play will be perceived by the audience as the main character. Don't switch main characters part way through. Having invested themselves fully in one character, they will be less inclined to give themselves to another. Each character enters the play with an action, a plan, and a mindset. An actor will not stand on stage doing nothing. It is by what they do and how they do it that they define the character. The script may say, lights up on Bob in the kitchen of his house. Put the actor on stage and he will decide if Bob is wiping down the counters, doing the dishes, looking for something in the cupboards, or killing bugs on the floor. He won't go against the text, but he will find some action for him to carry out when the lights come up. So if his character is proud, he will be carrying out the action in a proud manner. If he is trying to please someone or hates every speck of dirt, you will see that in his behavior before he says a single word. Since actors will not stand on stage doing nothing, it is best if the playwright chooses what the character is doing. Lights up on Bob, making coffee. Too boring? Lights up on Bob, trying to make coffee. 
The character's behavior tells the audience who the character is. The character is what he does. Strong choices for character behavior give the actors what they need to make an impression on the audience. Helping the actor to do that creates synergy between the playwright and the actor. Note that a character's action, her plan, and her mindset are not the same entities. A character can plan one thing, but have to do another, against her inclinations. Keeping each element distinct gives the playwright, and then the actor, more to work with to create complex and interesting characters. Bob has an action to make coffee and a plan to kill his mistress before his wife gets home. How he plans to do this will also tell the audience a lot about the character. What is his mindset? Is he frantic? Is he cold-blooded and experienced? The tone of his mind as he undertakes his action and carries out his plan will be reflected in every word he says as well as everything he does. It is in the tone of the words that you convey the character's mindset to the actor. Have the character's mindset in your mind as you write his lines, and it will be reflected in the words you choose. Then, in a cold reading, when the words are read out loud, the mindset, as well as the action and the plan, will be there. Every character who enters the stage will have an action, a plan, and a mindset. Over the course of each scene, these actions will be carried out, plans will be made and changed and remade, aiming the character towards his goal, and the mindset will drive both the action and the plan. You must have each of these elements in your head for each of the characters that is on stage over the course of the scene. The characters each enter with one plan, which, over the course of the scene, undergoes alterations, surprises, reactions, and, at the climax of the scene, the direction of each character has been altered. The more the characters change over the course of the play, the more it will feel to the audience like a long and eventful journey. Thus, each scene should bring each character to a new and significantly different place, a new action, a new plan, a new or renewed mindset. So, while you are unrolling the overall plot line that will take the play from the beginning to the act climax and to the play's climax, scene by scene you are also unrolling each character's arc. The overall plot line needs to move along from event to event, tautly and without lagging. The internal plot lines, the events of each scene, also need to unfold without pause or let up. One way to make sure of this is to be sure that each and every event is necessary to move along the story of the play. If it is not necessary, or if it is a repeat or an overlap of a previous event, then cut it. Within each scene, each event needs to move along, driving the story forward. And every character's action line, plot line, and mindset line needs to be taught as well, each move necessary to the advance of the character's arc. If you pinned each of these arcs to a chart of your play, from beginning to end, they'd look like lines going across time from the beginning to the end of the play. Each of these lines adds a certain quantity of energy to your play. Keep these energy lines tight and moving forward. If one is flagging, go back and tighten it. This is what the momentum of your play is made of, and this is how you control it. The theater-going audience is self-selectively brighter than average. A single plot line, played out over two hours, will bore many of them. They know enough to be able to anticipate what is going to happen. Setting in motion multiple plot lines and energy lines for each character puts in play more elements than anyone can keep track of all at once. This allows the playwright to surprise even the cleverest audience member and keep them engaged and entertained. In addition, overloading an audience member's capacity to track everything creates a sense of euphoria in their brain and also makes them open and receptive to new ideas. This increases the effectiveness of the play. In a good play, the main character undergoes a transcension at the climax. In a better play, all the characters are changed by the events they undergo. In a great play, at the climax, the plot also undergoes a transcension. This is the point at which the events of the play are so truthful and so powerful that they create an echo of themselves. At that point, it will seem as if the story is a perfect metaphor for real life. It will acquire a profound resonance of truth and passion. How do you make this happen? 
not by planning it in advance, any more than starting by thinking up a theme and then writing it will give you anything more than a wooden illustration of the predetermined message. Tell the story. Tell the story truthfully, with every iota of emotional integrity that you possess. Then, when you get to your climax, you may glimpse the metaphor that your back brain is working towards. At that point, with your play already formed under your hands, you may make the small shifts that will strengthen the plot transcension that is already there. In the end, as we know, it's all about the story. Insofar as you have a good story, you will have a good play. Insofar as you construct it effectively, so effective will it be. In our next lesson, we will discuss jest, theatricality, and the eighth and ninth functions of dialogue. If you would like more information on playwriting, my manual, Playwriting, the Merciless Craft, Comprehensive Techniques for Mastering Beginning, Intermediate, and Advanced Playwriting, is available from Amazon as both an ebook or a paperback. If you have questions or comments, or are interested in a workshop or master's class, you can contact me through my website at thecarolwolf.com.